Today I'm going to show you how you can make your own network cables and in doing that save a bit of money in your home network projects. Hi, I'm Axel. This is the channel all about technology for your home such as networking and smart tech. If that interests you, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Today I want to help you save a bit of money by knowing how to make your own network cables. Network cables can be very expensive and it's very rare to find a cable that is the perfect length for your projects either way. However, the parts for the network cables in themselves are often just a tenth or less of the price of a full completed cable. Therefore, making a cable yourself is actually very very cheap in comparison. Please like this video if you find it helpful and subscribe to my channel to not miss any future tutorials or tips. All you need to make your own cable is a long category 6 ethernet cable such as this 1000 feet one from Amazon, connectors in the amount you need, a cable stripper, a crimp tool and preferably a cable tester. I will have links to everything you'll need in the description below. The first thing we need to do is strip about an inch or two of the cable. To do this we simply place the cable in the cable stripper and spin it around the cable and then pull it off. Now we can untwist all the small cables and bend them down a bit so we can cut off the plastic centerpiece. Once that's out of the way, we can arrange all the small cables in a specific color order. There are two standards in which order the cables are going to be sorted, but the most common one is called RG45B. And that's orange, orange stripe, green, blue stripe, blue, green stripe, brown, brown stripe. When the cables are properly aligned in the right order, we straighten them out and flatten them as much as we can, and we cut them evenly using our crimp tool. If your crimp tool doesn't have a cut feature, a normal scissor works fine. The only important thing is that all the cables are the exact same length in the end. The length of the colored cables should be approximately the same length as the connector, but rather a bit shorter than longer if possible. And then we're going to take our connector and with the puller facing down, we take the orange cable to the left and carefully sliding it in without the cables changing orders. All the cables should go all the way in before you continue, but this step can be very tedious, but just continue trying until you make it work. When all the cables are as far in the connector as possible, we place it in our crimp tool and squeeze it. And that is the first end of our first cable. When the first end is done, we obviously need to continue the cable by finishing the other end, but to do that we need to know how long the cable is going to be. Obviously I can't help you on the length part, however I will give you a recommendation to add a few inches. We need this little safety margin, because sooner or later you will do a mistake, and now we're prepared for it. And then we just repeat the process from the first end to the second end. And that is stripping the cable, then untwisting the smaller cables and cutting off the plastic centerpiece, aligning the cables in order of the RJ45B standard, cutting them evenly and lastly carefully sliding on the connector and crimping it together with the crimping tool. Once that is done, it's actually ready to use. However, from experience, I will recommend testing the cable before you continue. I always do this as soon as the cable is done, so I can fix the problems I have before it's already plugged in and I have to troubleshoot my way down to what's the problem. To test the cable, we take a cable tester and plug the cable into each part of the cable tester, and then turn the tester on. The tester will then test each one of the colored cables inside, and a light will indicate that it works. 
If it doesn't work, at least one of your ends isn't correct. There is no way to check which one of the ends is incorrect, and this is where our safety margin from earlier comes in handy. The problem can either be that the cables aren't aligned properly in the connector, and that you can easily see if the colors aren't in the right order if you chose transparent connectors. The other possibility is that the cables aren't pushed in the connector far enough, and they won't get contact. Unfortunately, there is only one way to fix this, and that is to cut off the connector and try again. So in other words, a safety margin on the cable is very important, because otherwise your cables will be too short. When you've corrected your mistakes, or if you didn't have any mistakes to begin with, congratulations, you've made your first Ethernet cable. I hope you were able to make a cable successfully, and please do subscribe to my channel and like this video if you did. If there was any part of the tutorial that was very unclear, please tell me in the comments with a few questions so I can answer them and clear things up. Also, if you have any suggestions or thoughts, please share them in the comments as well, as I read all of my comments. As you can tell here, this is the end screen. However, I suggest you continue by watching one of these two videos or subscribing to my channel by pressing my face here. Is that to the right side or is it this way? Wait, that way?